Hey everyone, I just wanted to do a quick tutorial about something I just found out. There's a lot of tutorial videos out there that talk about making custom startup files for Blender. I think a lot of people do this once they figure this out, right? Everyone's familiar with the old school default cube, and once we get to know Blender, we say, yeah, I'm tired of the old default cube. I don't want to have to delete it every time, or maybe I hate having to reorganize the UI. I wish Blender started with more useful materials or meshes or whatever. So eventually you'd figure this trick out. After fiddling around for a while, we get Blender how we like it. We have some prefab materials or a base mesh or whatever you like. And we go up here to File. We go down here to Defaults. And then we click right here where it says Save Startup File. And what this does is this saves every little change that we've made, our preferences, our workspaces. And now whenever we boot up Blender instead of the old default cube, we're instead greeted by our lovely new default startup. Now, here's a few things that I don't see a lot of people talking about. So with saving a custom startup, you can do more than just replace the Buddha file, which is automatically loaded when we launch the software. I'm sure you realize if we go here to File and the Create New File options, there are actually several options for what we can choose from. 2D animation, VFX, video editing. That one's a personal favorite. I actually use that one quite a lot. Let's load that one up. And with our new video editor file made, the same rules apply as for when we were messing with the generic boot up file. So say, I didn't want the generic video editor to start in my C drive over here. I want it to start in my sound library, so I can use that right away. I could add a little soundtrack, I don't know, something classic like this. And I can even make an entire new window for one of my extra monitors for video libraries or whatever I might need. And after all that, if I go up here, down to defaults and hit save startup, this is now the new video editing template and we can load it whenever we want. So, here raises the question. We have a selection of different possible templates and we can also edit them however we like, but how do we actually make more? I mean, most software let you make your own. We can't just be stuck with only like five, right? I mean, there's not even a template for 3D animation. Do we just go and replace some of these instead, like VFX? Because seriously, look at this. Am I ever going to use this or sculpting? I don't even think this needs a template. So the answer to this is annoyingly esoteric, but we very well can do both and it's actually pretty simple. We're now going to get into exactly how to make new templates, where they're stored, and also how to edit them. And you know what? I, I feel bad. We dethroned the default cube of their place in the default startup template, so why don't we make a new template that's just a factory fresh default cube without anything fancy in it? So. We can just clear our entire file, and once we have our default cube in place, what we need to do now is save it as a new blend file. However, we need to save it in a very particular way. First, we're going to make a new folder called templates, which is just going to be a container for where we're actually putting them. I'm going to put this folder in my Blender project folder so it's in a very centralized place. And inside this folder, we're going to make another folder, which we're going to name what we want our template to be which I'll call factory default. And then inside that folder is where we're actually going to save the blend file. And the blend file must be saved as startup.blend. This is a case sensitive operation. For the next step, what we need to do now is we have to select the folder where we just saved our startup file and we need to zip it. So if you don't have 7-zip or <laughs> WinRAR or something, you probably should go do that first. But once you do get them zipped and ready to go, there's only one more thing we need to do. We can open Blender back up, and what we need to do is we need to go over here to this little Blender icon right here next to the file menu and click it. This will open up a small menu that I doubt most people even know exist. And from here, we're going to go here to this option, Install Template Application. And from here, we're going to have to navigate back to our Blender project file. Select the new zip file that we made and hit Install. And with that, we can go over here into the new files and we can see that we now do in fact have a brand new template. And you may be like me and now having seen how this is done, you may have a few questions about the whole process and well, as do I in fact. There's a few things I don't understand, uh, namely, and uh, pardon my technical vernacular, but why the fuck was that so complicated? To save over an existing template, it's as simple as clicking a button. But to make a new one, you gotta set up a whole magic circle and lay the altar and ask the freaking zip wizard to transmogrify the thing just to get Blender to install the damn thing. And where did it even go anyway? Let's open this notification here and figure that out. Ah, roaming data. That's where all the cool things happen on the computer. Let's just go there, shall we? I'll just, what? Oh, guess I can't do that. All right, gotta do this the old fashioned way. Windows R, App Data, Blender Foundation. Okay, after going through the whole directory, we finally get to the location of our templates, and it's, uh, it's a little vacant here. There's, uh, only one. 
Well, anyway, basically what happened is when we did the whole song and dance of installing that template, it just took the zip file that we gave them and then they extracted it and put it here. Pretty simple, right? It's, it's good to show off a bit of the method to the madness to make it make sense. I'm gonna do it! Oh, I'm gonna fucking do it! Anyway, I got a better idea. I mean, if all we're gonna be doing is making a folder then saving a file in a really dumb and roundabout way, why don't we just cut out the middleman? Watch this. Okay, so after about eight hours of going through and trying to figure out the Blender API in Python, I finally wrote a script that automates the whole process. It's a Blender add-on that I'm calling ZenPlates. I think that's a rather appropriate name. And what it does is it adds a new button under the default options here, save as template. And when we click on it, it opens up some menu prompt asking for a template name. All we gotta do is give it one, hit okay, and this will automatically add our current file as an entirely new template. Simple as that. It does have its limitations, it can't delete templates, and you gotta be case sensitive if you want to save over an existing template, but to be honest, I'm perfectly happy with how it is. The item will be on my Patreon for free in the description below if anyone's interested. Feel free to modify it and make it better too. I didn't set up any exceptions in case you did something dumb like add a special character to the template name field. It gets angry when you do that. All right, one last thing that I can show you is how to delete some of these sneaky templates that are hiding from us, because I am certainly not going to be touching the VFX stuff, and it's just sitting here taunting me. Well, since these are the templates that ship with Blender, the directory for them would actually be in the install folder of your current version of Blender. So if you're like me and never change the location for the installer, it should be in your program files in the C drive, under Blender Foundation and the version of Blender you're using and the version number again script startup then BL app templates system and here they are something also to note is that due to their location when deleting one of these templates it requires admin privileges but fortunately for me I don't care goodbye VFX I have never used you in seven years of using this software well that's about it I hope you enjoyed the video and learned a thing or two be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you did, and to anyone who does use my add-on, I, I do insist, please do make it better. It it's something that really should come with Blender by default. Well, that's it. See ya.